You like cheap comic books, right? Well, I'm Professor Allen, and I talk about cheap comic books on the Quarterbin Podcast. In every episode, I'll dissect a single comic from my collection, as long as I paid no more than 25 cents for the issue. Forget about $4 new comics that you can read in four minutes, or crossover events that can cost 100 bucks to collect. Join me in the quarter bin, where even bad comics are a bargain, and good ones are a steal. The Quarter Bin Podcast is part of the Relatively Geeky Podcast Network. Visit us at relativelygeekypodcast.blogspot.com or search Relatively Geeky or Quarter Bin Podcast in iTunes. I guarantee it'll be worth every penny. Time for a break from our show to pay the bills. Check out beacons.ai slash comics fund profit for all the C4 FAP links you could ever need all in one place. You can provide feedback, listen, support, share, enjoy these. We have our Patreon there. You can buy us a beer or a coffee. You can check out our Instagrams, our Twitters, our Facebooks. Check out our YouTube page. You can email us. You can listen to our podcasts on Patreon, if you're a subscriber, on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, on Podbean. We have Google Podcasts on there. We have an Amazon wish list. You want to buy Kyle and I something? Fine. You can do that here. We appreciate it. We have Kyle's RPG podcast listed on there, so you can check out his Dork Day Afternoon offerings. We have Cowabunga links, so you can check out the Cowabunga Deep Discount FOC and Pre-Order List. Get on that. That's RLCS, so you can check that out as well. And we want to just give you opportunities to say hi, to check out what we're doing, support us if you would like, or just listen. Check out beacons.ai slash comics fund profit for all the C4 FAP links you could ever need. Thanks. Back to the show. Thank you for listening to Comics for Fun and Profit, episode 931, with just Drew. Kyle's had a rough go. He's building a deck, and uh, his brother, big brother, hasn't helped him at all, so he's exhausted. And um, can't go. Fell asleep like a little baby. Um, So, in lieu of that, um, too late to get a co-host... Uh, so I'm going to do a solo cast, and it's probably going to be terrible, and that's okay. That's okay. Um, we'll get those every once in a while. So uh, i got some questions that came in, and I'm going to take some of these and um, save the rest for Kyle. So what was the first comic book you ever read, and how did it impact you? Um, it was Richie Rich, and... I had a stack of them from some uncle, I think, or cousin, and I thought they were amazing. Uh, and it probably impacted me in the wrong way because that was my like foundation of what success looked like, you know, to be wealthy, and I gravitated towards wanting my life to be a rich person, uh, incredibly wealthy. And I had a poster on my wall that said the one that dies with the most toys wins and just pictures of stuff, rich stuff that you can have. And, um, I don't think I'm not like that anymore. Uh, so <laughs> that's not the right way to go, but I did, uh, I did start that way. Thanks to Richie Rich Comics, but uh, the the positive side of Richie Rich Comics was it um, made me want to read more comics, different types of comics, and I think from there I, I, I got a Batman and a Superman. I don't have any idea what they were, and they might have been like collections of kids' versions of those stories. I don't even remember. I was pretty young, so single digits myself I think um, but it was it was foundational I mean I do remember I do remember that comic those comics and um, loving Richie Rich wanting to be Richie Rich and um, for good or bad 
Uh, which comic book series would you recommend to someone new to the medium? Hmm. I think it depends, I guess. Um, something Eric at Calabunga said they do is like they'll talk to somebody, a, a new person that stumbles in looking at comp for, looking for comic re recommendations and they'll ask him about like, what kind of movies do you watch? What, kind, what are your favorite TV shows? And then that will drive them towards the right genre. I mean, if if they like sci-fi at all, I'm handing them a saga, right? If they like, you know, a slice of life, you know, maybe you give them a, a Southern Bastards. Although that's kind of a noir -y. Man, you could give them any of the Brubaker Phillips if they like mysteries at all. I mean, just grab a grab one, hand that over. Um, you know, if it's a fashion girl, a young girl who's into fashion or something like that, maybe give her a snot girl. Um, what else? You know, I don't. You know, if they're if they just saw Deadpool and Wolverine, I guess. You know, you give them some Deadpool and Wolverine books and superhero stuff. So, I mean, you can't go wrong with handing them a Watchmen or a Dark Knight Returns or Sandman or Why the Last Man or um, any of the favorites, both critically and popular from the last thousand years hundred years <laughs> however long we are um uh, what are your top five favorite comic book series of all? well i kind of just named them um so why the last man is well up there saga walking dead it's tough to keep them out even though saga's pissing me off with all the um delays you know and uh, but that's that's definitely one and, uh, gosh, is Moon Knight my favorite series of all, my favorite comic book series of all time? I think collectively, yes. Yeah. I mean, they've had, uh, it's had ups and downs. I'd like to say Sandman. It's been so long since I've read Sandman, and I don't know how it holds up. I loved it. I loved it so much in the 90s. Um, Preacher I have read again. And it's just a fantastic, a fantastic comic that I, that I love. Um, I think I'm easily at four right there. And then, I mean, Watchmen for sure. For sure. So that's five. Um, which comic book character do you relate to the most and why? Mm, I would have to think about this one a little longer because... Uh, you know, I, who have I read? And I was like, oh, this is me. I guess I really, I'm not, I guess there's like pieces and parts that might be me. Um, but you know, I can't relate. I guess I can relate to relate to Peter Parker, you know, being poor, <laughs> trying to make ends meet. Yeah, I can relate to that. Um. I can relate to, you know, wanting to uh, do good, and so that relate. That's a piece that's relatable. Um, you know, I, there's lots of lots of slice of life comics I've read over the years that are like I feel very much a kinship to some of the characters in there, and I can't think of any off the top of my head. Um, these are off the cuff questions and answers. I'm sorry. Um, what are the most underrated comic book series that deserve more attention? Well, any slice of life. Um, I'd like this. I would have said BKV a while ago, but he's he's got his due since then. Um, I, I don't think Brubaker Phillips gets enough attention. I mean, these things are just fantastic. Great books, great no, great crime noir, and. Um, should all be adapted soon, uh, I hope. 
Um, I think Southern Bastards is a criminally underrated comic, and if it had finished, um, may have stuck the landing and really cemented itself as a top one. Um, and, and, and I mean, there's there's tons of image series from the 2010 to 2020 range. Go back a couple years, 2008, um, pre-pandemic, um, that is just solid, solid stuff. You know, think about all those image first, first wave comics and um, the, the lows and the low was great. And, um, all the remember stuff. I mean, and, you know, those things may have been read by... 30,000 people, 40,000 people, at least in sales. I mean, I don't know what their subsequent graphic novel sales were, but, you know, criminally underread. Uh, no pun intended. What are your favorite comic book publishers outside of Marvel and DC? That's obviously Image and Boom and AWA. Uh, those are the big three for me. Went Aftershock too. Aftershock too. Those those four do a lot of great stuff. Uh, a lot of stuff that I read. Um, and have a high hit rate with me. Um, when you get into the Dark Horses, IDW, Dynamites, they have some standouts, but they have way more licenses and stuff that I don't gravitate towards. So. Uh, what graphic novel should everyone read at least once? Uh, I think everybody should read Watchmen at least once. Um, i trying to think of a standalone one graphic novel collection, not like an omnibus of tons of stuff. Like what's kind of a shortish, you know, 12 issues or less. Um, and yeah, I think, I think Watchmen is the, the clear standout there that kind of perfect. Um, I put Dark Knight Returns on that list, um, uh, but these are kind of foundational for me, so I'm biased, you know, late eighties comics, early nineties comics, um, all those feel like they're necessary reading and it might just be because of the error that I read them. Mm -hmm. uh, what are some of the best comic books for young readers? Um, any of those early Super Sons are great. They are rooted in uh, superhero comics. But they're not too, they're not, they don't cross any lines. They're really, really good and they have great chemistry um, from the, the writers, that's De, De, De Mateus, right? Yeah, and um, just a really good entry into into superhero comics, I think. Uh, what are what are your favorite comic book moments that made a lasting impression on you? Um, I would say like the first issue of Saga was <laughs> was pretty. Uh, uh, that that first issue was just like wow, this is a new way to. Um, take a take a story um you know with amazing art and i can't believe they went there plot twists and i was like wow this is this is great and um just am amazing stuff i think i mean I, another bkv you know the first issue of why i'm like wow this is really brilliant next level these ain't just funny books man these are these are next level um so those two big debuts from BKV really, really did a lot to make a lasting impression on what this medium could be and and what it means. If you could write or draw for any comic book series, which one would it be and why? Um, I wouldn't draw because I can't draw, but I'd love to, yeah, I'd love to write Batman or Spider-Man. Um, those are the big two. I don't know that I'd I guess Moon Knight, you know, the favorite character of mine, so I'd probably want to write them too. So, um, 
Batman because, you know, the biggest character in DC. Spider-Man because the biggest character in Marvel. Um, and, you know, uh, the smaller characters would be Moon Knight, Sergeant Rock. I'd like to write in either one of those. Um, I have zero experience with war in real life, but I've seen a lot of war movies. <laughs> and uh, um, maybe I could wing it. I don't know. I, it might be uh, inauthentic. <laughs> um, so those are some answers right off the top for some questions that um, came in. And um, we'll get into uh, the rest of the solo uh, podcast in just a second. Move over to CBSI. And Kyle usually does this, so this is going to be, this is weird for me. Um, but this is the Hot 10 from CBSI. First up is Uncanny X-Men 251. And for those of you, spoilers, who saw Deadpool and Wolverine, uh, that great cover shot of Wolverine on the big X impaled uh, that takes the top spot. These have moved up to 60 bucks this week. Uh, CG 98s. CGC 9s 8s have went well over 300 bucks, and um, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. You know, no reason, just an iconic scene has driven this. That's really awesome. Uh, rank 2, we have Uncanny X-Men number 1, the 1 in 50, uh, the new Gail Simone X-Men. So it's a 1 in 50. Obviously, it should do pretty well And um, from scarcity. A uh, high sale of 130 got it nailed, but it's doing well over 70 bucks, so you're making a little bit of money on it. Um, if if you're finding it for 50 bucks, which I never can seem to find those for ratio. At rank three, we have um, Marvel Superheroes Secret Wars number 10, the Doom cover. So this is the old school Secret Wars original. Um, and so Doom's hot. Uh, this is hot. Um, this is now over 30 bucks with the CGC 9.8 um, going for 270. And they've sold 70, 70 of these bad boys this week. Uh, Blood Hut 5, um, the 1 in 25, which is also a Doom cover. And uh, kind of a shot. If you haven't read Blood Hunt, this is also a spoiler, but. Um, where he he's the Sorcerer Supreme, and that's him on the cover. It's really cool. Uh, about fifteen bucks a piece, and uh, forty dollars uh, plus. Uh, Twenty of them have moved, which is cool. At rank five, we have Iron Man eleven. This is a Jeff Loeb, Wills Pertasio, and it's half Iron Man, half Doom on the cover. So it's going to mash up. It used to be a dollar bin book. Now is uh, Twenty dollars, average. Uh, Thirty of them have moved, so um, probably continue to rise. Um, Uncanny X Men two sixty six. This is first Gambit, and it has spiked again uh, after Channon Tatum's uh, debut in the Deadpool Wolverine. Fifty copies of this move, ten of them being nine eights, um, averaging six hundred bucks. And a new stand, 98, even went for 1500 so that's pretty nice. At rank 7, we have Iron Man and the Armor Wars, number 2, uh, which is kind of cool. Um, I'm not sure why it's uh, this underrated Scotty Young. Oh, it's a Scotty Young cover. Okay. But it's also a Doom, Doom cover. So, Infamous Iron Man number one, we know that's a Doom as Iron Man deal. So, also spiking. This is nothing but Deadpool, Wolverine, and Doom. That's all it is. Jesus. At rank nine, we have Deadpool at 31. Uh, 40 sales of that. And High on Life rounds out the top ten. Thank Christ. It's not... Deadpool, Wolverine, or Doom. Uh, Alec Robbins, Baltimore, Revis. Um, it's got optioned. It's a video game adaptation. 
Kyle's here. He can tell me what the hell that is. I've never heard of it high on life. Um, it's selling around 13 bucks. Uh, and um, we'll see what happens. But uh, hey, at least something else cracked the top 10. Uh, down in the uh, notable sales, we have Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 100, the Ultimate Comics Edition. Uh, Peach Momoko on the cover. And it's uh, a CGC 98 just sold for 1500 bucks. Very limited book. Um, I guess because it's an Ultimate Comics Edition. Um, so uh, good luck finding that one. And we have a Patsy Walker 26. And this is the kind of showcasing that the Hellcat, the Tedesco Hellcat cover, was an homage to this old ass Patsy Walker number 26. And the, the Patsy Walker number 26 from back in the day, um, uh, 7.0, just sold for 840 bucks. And so romance comics are alive and well. Very cool. This is hard without Kyle. I don't love it. Um, I think I might just do a couple picks, sneak peek picks, and call it because it's real. This is really hard to do without a little back and forth. So hats off to friend of the show Mike Myers, who does his own Mike M's Weekly Read solo every week. And um, yeah, talking to yourself for. An hour. That's I can't do it. I just can't do it. Uh, I'm, and so I'm gonna do my picks. So <laughs> I'm gonna fast forward through the, what our normal segments are and get to my picks. And my first pick is gonna be Babs number one. This is an Ahoy Comics book written by Garth Ennis with art by Jason Burroughs. And this is a great team that is currently on that war comic over at Marvel about Nick Fury and Frank Castle. Um, Get Fury, I think it's called, uh, but it's fantastic. Um, so this is about Babs, a barbarian thief with an itchy metal wardrobe and the world's most enchanted sword named Barry. Together they travel a fantastic landscape of wizards, dragons, demons, castles, and a band of very angry wa- Barry White Knights. Babs wasn't looking for a fight, but she's never found a bad situation. She couldn't make 100 times worse. Um, doesn't matter what it's about. It's Garth Ennis, and it's Jason Burroughs. So that means the writing's going to be smart, and the art's going to be fantastic. And whatever the concept is, I bet you they weave an interesting tale. So I'm definitely checking this out and recommend Babs number 1 from Ahoy Comics. My second pick is Houses of the Holy. Now, I'm breaking my own rules. Uh, This is more of fun than a profit, and it's a hardcover, and it's uh, Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips. Houses of the Unholy, not Houses of the Holy. I'm sorry. Houses of the Unholy. Um, I'm assuming it's an image graphic novel. Aren't they all... Ed Brubaker, Sean Phillips, an FBI agent from the cult crime beat and a woman with a past linked to the satanic panic are drawn into a terrifying hunt for an insane killer hiding in the shadows of the underworld. Can you ever escape your past or are all your bad decisions just more ghosts to haunt you wherever you go? It's a horror thrill ride. As you may know, I love all things Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips. I am cautiously optimistic about the Amazon criminal series that they're adapting. Um, Everything that they do should be in every medium possible because I love it so much. But this is a $25 hardcover, so make sure if you didn't pre-order this, you got to pay full retail. That's a bummer. Um, But it's, I'm sure it's great. I'm sure it's great. So my two picks are... Houses of the Holy, Houses of the Unholy, did it again, and Babs number one. So we want to thank you for listening to this abbreviated and solo Comics for Fun and Profit. And since you only had half the hosts, yeah, it's about half the size of a normal episode. And I think that's okay. That that tracks. So uh, thanks for listening and see ya. RLCS.
is Cowabunga Comics out of Oconomowoc, Wisconsin. And their mail order company, Deep Discount Comics. Um, and we went there and, and we were actually invoice number 0001. We are the we were the very first <laughs> their very first customer, um, which was kind of cool. They've been nothing short of fantastic customer service wise. Discounts they were very close, if not the same or better than DCBS on a lot of things. Um, mm-hmm. Over and above uh, customer service wise, always taking care of us, going the extra mile, so responsive, getting instantaneous. Uh, responses back to uh, questions about things and to the point where knowing the stuff you like and anticipating your needs and having it suggested to, that you might want to add this to your order already uh, before you even have to think about about it that's kind of cool really quality experience so we, we love working with Calabunga and Deep Discount and that's why they're in our show notes every single episode and have been for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of episodes mm-hmm. that we leave them there because we like them. They're cool, good people. That's why they're in there. By God, they'd tell you to, if you've got a local comic book shop that you love, stay with them because every, everybody needs to support their local comic shops. But if you're looking, check them out. You can check them out in, in the show notes. There's plenty of ways to get a hold of them. Either get on their list just so you can check and see what kind of FOC and pre-order stuff they have and the discounts, and they'll send it to you um, each month, get you on that email list. And you can check out their shop because they have a great shop of exclusive Cowabunga Mm -hmm. variants. Amazing stuff. Yes, they've always been there for us, and we take them for granted. So there you go. Now Now you know. The good folks at Comics for Fun and Profit have been doing two episodes a week um, for quite some time now and it's all thanks to first of all jason and second of all our patrons who allow us to add the space on our server broadcast more store more share more with you listeners i'm envious of those of you who have unlimited storage and media server capabilities we we pay for ours here at at the c4 fap it ain't cheap we thank you so much for those of you who go to patreon.com slash comics fun profit and contribute at any level to say thanks, to say I want to be a part of your Slack channel conversations, I want to get exclusives, I want to get early access, I want to get ad free access, I want to get swag, I want to get some free stuff, whatever your reasoning is, we appreciate it at any level because it does make a difference. So from the bottom of Kyle and I and Jason's heart, thank you for contributing 